Hello, welcome to Atomic Structure. So we finished our fundamentals last week. Okay, so we are going to start with the uh, with atomic structure. This is pretty much the starting of uh, the, the real chemistry, I would say. Okay, so the real chemistry, I would say. So, so an atom is consist of an atom is consist of a nucleus yeah that is a core a dense nucleus and this nucleus is surrounded by orbits where the electrons revolve so inside this nucleus you have protons and neutrons. So the electrons are negatively charged. So I've written an E minus here. And then protons are positively charged and neutrons are zero charged. So this is a fundamental unit of an atom. So if you look at the periodic table, if you take any element, if you take, let's say we take hydrogen. The hydrogen, if you look at the periodic table, it will say it's one, one. That represents the, the bottom number always represents the atomic number. The top, the subscript is atomic number. The superscript is called as the mass number. The atomic number refers to number of protons, which will be equal to number of electrons. in a neutral species. What is a neutral species? In which there is no loss of electron has happened. So in this case, since the atomic number is one, hydrogen will have one proton and one electron. Meaning there will be one proton inside the nucleus and there will be one electron that will be revolving around the nucleus. So if you take any other element, let's take carbon, which has an atomic number of six and a mass number of 12. Now it has six protons and six electrons. So there is six protons inside the nucleus. And six electrons outside the nucleus. So in the in the same way world, you have two things. One is called as the uh, microcosm. And another one is called as a macrocosm. So the macrocosm is something like a system like a sun in the middle and all the uh, planets are going around. Now, if you come to a smaller unit like an atom, which is very, very small, micro, this exactly looks like the arbitrary system. Like the nucleus is at the center, like the sun, and the electrons are going around. So the more the microcosm and the macrocosm are mimicking each other. Okay. So we have a limitation. The human eye here has a limitation. We cannot see this 
we cannot see this also. For both of them, we need instrumentations. So if you want to see a faraway planet, we, say, we send an instrument to look at where the planet is. So if you the same thing happens if you want to count how the electrons are revolving, we have to send another, we have to see through an instrumentation to look into this atoms. So the instrumentation has to be working properly to make sure what we discover is true. Okay? That is very important. So now when we look at these all these three things, we have, as I said, we have protons, we have neutrons, we have electrons. Let's look at some of the things that each one of them possess. So what are the mass, what is the weight of each of these particles? Each proton will weigh 1.6 into 10 to the power of minus 27 kilogram. A neutron also weighs very similar. Minus 27 means it's very, very small. right? And now look at the electron. 9.1 into 10 to the power of minus 31. Now, here 10 to the power of 27 versus 10 to the power of 31. So, both proton and neutron are 1,000 times heavier. 1,000 okay, times heavier. Then electrons. Yeah. And then in terms of atomic mass units, AMU, um, mass units. They weigh one atomic mass units, one atomic mass units, and one divided by 1837 times. And in location, we know that the proton is inside the nucleus. The neutrons are also inside the nucleus. And electrons are in the orbits. In terms of charge, we know that protons are positively charged, neutrons are zero, and electron has negative charge. So we should have a clear picture about these differentiations where the most important thing here is to remember that the we have a dense nucleus. The nucleus is very dense because it has particles, thousand times heavier particles compared to a very light electrons that is flying around the orbits. And they are negatively charged compared to the, compared, comparatively to the positively charged nucleus. Now, we have what is called as an isotopic notation. So what is isotopic notation? So if you represent any element X, so Z and A, Z is the atomic number. But A is referred as the mass number. So atomic number, we know it is nothing but the number of protons. Usually atomic number refers to number of protons because the electrons might change. Okay? The atom might lose electrons. Okay, But usually it will be number of protons and number of electrons are one and the same. So X is nothing but the symbol. We're going to see an example. The mass number okay, is the difference. The mass number here is very important. Is the difference. Number of neutrons
minus number of protons. Okay, let's look at let's look at an example. So, if you look at the uh, let's look at an example. Let's look at uh, nitrogen seven fourteen. So now this Z the seven represents the number of protons. So it has seven protons and seven electrons. So to find the number of the mass number rep represents the, the mass number is 14. Okay, so the number of neutrons is the mass number minus protons. Okay, so basically 14 minus 7 is equal to 7. So it is 7 neutrons. Okay, so this is very important. So mass number is A minus Z. Instead of this, we can write A minus Z is equal to number of neutrons. Okay, so where we can see this, I can show you. Um, So the atomic number, understanding this part is very important. Okay, So just calculating values is very important. So if you take uh, if you take carbon as an example, one more time, carbon C C six twelve. So now we know that protons they have you have six protons and you have six electrons. So this twelve minus six. So to find the neutrons, use twelve minus six is six here. It comes as uh, easy, but it is not going to be the same in many cases. If you take, if you take lead, and you see this atomic number is eighty-two, and the mass number is two zero seven. Now you can see that uh, the protons are eighty-two, and electrons are uh, eighty-two, but the number of neutrons will be two zero seven minus eighty-two. So, which will be, um, I have to calculate right now. Okay, so, I'm just using a calculator. 207 minus 82. Roughly, I will have 125 neutrons here. Right. So, it is not going to be the same because in both the cases, the reason I was thinking is it's going to be the same here because the, the numbers were just as though it is multiplied by two, but it will not be the same case. Okay, initially, when you look at the periodic table, it will look like this, all the mass numbers are multiplied by two, till when you come to, till atomic number 30, it will look like that, and then it will start slowly deviating, okay? So each and every atom will have what are called as isotopes. Atoms forms isotopes. Isotopes are very important. Okay, each and like let's say hydrogen. Hydrogen has three isotopes: H11, H12, H13. Okay, protium, deuterium, and tritium. Here, the atomic numbers or all of them are same. One, one, one. But the mass numbers are different. One, two, three. 
Okay, so they have different mass numbers. So when they have different mass numbers, the electrons are also, the number of neutrons are also different. If you look at this example, simple example, let's look at this H11, H12, H13. So when we see number of protons, electrons and neutrons, since 111, they will have one proton, one proton, one proton, one electron, one electron, one electron. Here the number of neutrons will be 1 minus 1 is 0. Here 2 minus 1 is 1. But here 3 minus 1 is 2. So you will have 0 neutrons. This is the only species which has 0 neutrons actually. There is 1 neutron and there are 2 neutrons in the species. Okay. So in tritium, if you look at this, if you draw, you will have 2 neutrons. Okay. And then 1 proton. And there will be one electron revolving around this species. So there are these are called isotopes. Isotopes usually have different number of different number of neutrons. So we don't this nature makes this okay all the, all the atoms are made by nature okay so the, so and the nature makes these isotopes as well for each of the atoms how we can discover this how we can discover this is is what is called as we have a machine called as mass spectrometry the mass spectrometry machine can identify how many isotopes are there and in what proportion these are formed in each of the elements. So if you take hydrogen and you put it in mass spectrometry, the mass spectrometry can identify and say that it forms three isotopes. And then it is informing in certain uh, ratios. It can say, oh, 93% is protein. And then let's say nine uh, next, 6% is deuterium. I'm just giving an example. I'm not, it's not accurate. 1% is tritium or something like that. Okay. So it gives you a rough estimate. Uh, sorry, it's not rough. It's it gives an accurate estimate of this. Okay. But this number is, is just a guess. Okay. I'm just that I'm making. So, but this mass spectrometry is, a, is, is almost like half a million uh, machine, but it will tell you what is, what is there in each, uh, Atom. Okay, that is very important. 